back for Inside Lemonster is brought to you in part through the generous support of M.P. Crowley Company Incorporated, and by Landmark Self Storage in Lemonster, www.landmarkselfstorage.com. What's the matter? You go to bed early or what? What's going on? I do. You can't go up there? No. I know we're on, but I'm still having a conversation with you. Okay. Narada Gumbo. Going to be up at Hampton Beach, right? Did you watch the special we did? I, I, didn't, I, don't, I haven't Narada had a chance Gumbo to... Explained. What is it? Explain. Narada Gumbo Explained. Is that something new? We, yeah, we had the music special that we did. Oh, you, recently? Yeah, it just came out Friday. Oh, cool. So we'll tell people to watch it. But if you want to see him live and you're up at Hampton Beach, 
and maybe even want to make a special trip. <clears throat> I'd like to try to get up there maybe Saturday night, but anyway, Neurotic Gumbo, great band, incredible amount of talent, a lot of sound, I got the horn section, and it'll be showing, I mean, playing. Uh, I hope they mentioned Lemons the one up there, but Friday and Saturday night um, up at uh, Hampton Beach. But before we do that, and most important for the day, because we didn't get a chance to, uh, to hear uh, an update from him for the last couple of weeks, is Art from the Art Report. Art. I'm back in town. We have missed you, Art. I did, well, believe me, I wish I was there. I wish I was there. Yes, I wish I was there. Yeah, I know. Uh, the missus had knee replacement I know. Surgery. How's she doing? Well, she's, it's slow, but she's coming back. <laughs> but there was an added issue with the uh, fact when I picked her up to bring her home, uh, they were loading her in the car and they dropped her. Oh. She fell and down she went. They picked her up, put her back in the wheelchair, brought her to the emergency room and back upstairs to the room. Oh. You talk about it. And you know, I was going to help, and I said, they said, you know, naturally, I understand. There were two, two people were going to put her in the car. I said, okay. They told me to get in the car. So I got in the car, and I looked over, and she was backing to, into the seat because with the new knee replacement, she couldn't really flex her legs and get in the normal way. Right. And as she sat on the seat, I looked over, and I said, you're not all the way. And before I could say in, they let go. The seat naturally compressed, but it was only three inches of seat. So she slid out of the car and down oh, she went. Bang. Oh, oh. And, you know, the only thing that was good about the whole deal, the, the emergency room was full. But because of what had happened, and it was on their property, man, they moved her right in. She was prioritized, and they did all the, the biggest concern was the knee. Right, and nothing happened? No, everything was fine. They checked it again the next day, and uh, we just went back uh, yesterday to the, no, yesterday, I, day before yesterday, I think, to uh, Lumberstone Hospital to Dr. Jones in his office. He did the reconstruction, and uh, everything's fine. they got to go back next week. They're just going to keep a good, close eye on it, but so far, so good. Good. Well, they got hugged and a On a squeeze. positive note, there's a, there's a, a tradition that I, I, I never knew until I married an Italian that when an Italian goes down or to surgery of any kind, you don't have to buy groceries for about a month and a half. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, they, you can start to I live off the supply. So much food, different types. Oh, it was t today was unbelievable. I couldn't decide what I wanted. Yeah. It's been going on for two weeks. Yeah, yeah. It was beautiful. It's, you Carol can, Dandini, my goodness gracious, the woman should own a restaurant. Well, they're getting ready for the, for the big one, I guess, right? They're always prepared. Yeah, and here's a classic. Another thing, a wonderful structure, the, the family structure of Italian home, that one of the people that come and gives Rita a daily uh, workout, she says, are you hungry? And he said, well, actually, it's only 10 in the morning. She says, you're hungry. She gave him two of the meatballs. Well, nothing wrong with that. Well, there is. When I went back there today to have a meatball grinder, there are no more. Wow, that's priority. Take care of the people that are helping you oh, rehab. Right. Right? And he said he said they were absolutely delicious. Oh, I bet they were. Oh, and sausage and, and these uh, stuff I've never had. It was like a potato salad, but it wasn't potato salad. It had olives in it and all this stuff and egg and, oh, gee. Good stuff. But, and hats off again to the construction in the city of Lumberstone in and about there's, there are there are no delays. The the the, no. the the police that are directing traffic, the minute they see a little bit back up, they they take action and they slow down the sl the slow side and speed up the big side. This is the it's, most it's amount of projects we had we've had at once, and smooth and uh, sm the smoothest it's ever gone. Perfect. Well, you know, they do, like you, they were redoing the sidewalks in North Lumberstone where the, the cement was, mixture was incorrectly applied by the contractor. Yeah. The Lumberstone side. So we're, I'm coming up from uh, golfing. I don't take Route 2 home from golf because it's Daytona Speedway, and I don't want no part of it. So I go through Fitzburg <laughs> and Westminster, 10 minutes longer, that's all. Anyway, I'm coming up, and I look up, and they got... Cement mixes going, they got this, they got that. And I see a police officer, there's about 15 orange cones up the middle of the road, and he's got to make room for them, for the traffic, and he's running. And as he's running, he's placing them. 
Office of Ben Grizzly. There you go, Frankie. <laughs> and as soon as I got close to him, I had the window down. He looks all over. Atta! I said, Frankie. It's like a reunion. Yeah. On <laughs> wheels. <laughs> but as usual, the city of Lemister is... No, oh, hey, I'll tell you, it's... Oh. It was all <laughs> worth the planning because everything's going so smoothly. So um, it's working out well. And got our, our illustrious DPW workers out there on uh, Viscoloid Ave now, running the drain lines, right? Doing drain lines there, Wayne? And they're doing the drain lines, getting ready for the total reconstruction, a new sidewalk. So it's, you know what? The better you plan and the more people you can involve, the better the plan is executed and the better results. And uh, we've got so many projects going on, but it's hardly noticeable. You know, with, with in terms Something of traffic. that I did notice, and I made it a point to look for it, and I couldn't find it. And it's the best thing I couldn't find. I didn't see any frustrated drivers giving the high signs to any of the workers or the police. They yeah. all they all were in the flow, realized what was going on, and appreciate what the end product's going to be. Absolutely. Having said all that, I am not running for mayor or anything else, but I do appreciate everything and everything in the city of Lomasville. Doctors included, and nurses. Oh, my goodness. Oh, yeah. Oh, and then, wow. then, I forgot myself. <laughs> Listen to this one. I take, We take her for her first checkup back at the hospital, get her in a wheelchair, bring her up. Everything's good. Now we're coming home. Bring her down. Bring her over to the car. Get her in the car. I take the wheelchair back, and as I do, I turn fast because there was a car coming, and one of the foot levers came down. I took a chunk out of my leg. You wouldn't believe the mess I got on my leg. I mean, took the meat right out of the leg. Oh, yeah. Cut it to uh, about an inch long. Trying to hurry. Dad, well, you know, now you sound like Rita. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, Trying I to was. hurry. See what happens? It was raining. I didn't want my hair to get spoiled. Oh, that's true. That too, yeah. That's right. Having said that, we'll talk to you next All time. All right, Dad. Good to talk All to right. you. Make sure you give her a big hug and a squeeze for us. I will. All right, she'll be kicking field goals. Yeah, football season's like eight weeks away, so tell her to get ready. All right, that was Art from the Art Report. Thank you. We're going to take a short break, and we'll be right back. And uh, we've got a little video to share with you. Um, I believe it was originally done in 2002. Is that when it was done? 2002, that 2002. is 2002. And uh, we have a little video to show you later. Uh, I'll, I'll kind of set it up for you, but we, we had decided that summer... Uh, that we were going to be in search of the great tomato and the best tomato, best tasting tomato. Now, we understood, uh, Kyle and I understood from the very beginning that this could get um, competitive. And when you're talking about people in their gardens around here and planting tomatoes, you, you might as well talk about uh, the Olympics and, um, and the bragging rights that go with it. So we, uh, we toured the city. And we went to visit a whole bunch of places, but there's uh, and we make tape of it. And as a disclaimer, uh, the video I'll show you a little later after we have our guest here, Judy Sumner, will be here. I, I got to tell you, Kyle had to edit some of it, I think, just because. Uh, well, I'll explain it to you. But anyway, stay tuned. You don't want to miss it. It's fun and a little bit of a memorial uh, for somebody that just passed away. That uh, anybody that knew him. Uh, I think we'll get a kick out of watching this video. We're taking a short break. We'll be right back here at Inside Lemus, the 978 534 1626. Now, do you can any of the tomatoes or anything? Do you do that uh, at all? A very little. Yeah, you used to do it though, right? Yeah, I'm not going to be here. No, right, to eat them. Yeah, they're going to squash. You got some butternut squash? Yeah. Or? I got a lot of those. I got them in a grudge. Big one. Look at the size of those. Is that a special seed? Yep. For butternut? Yeah. That feed, that'll feed a family of seven. <laughs> huh? I got a big one over there. But this year, not too good because no, no rain, no? Are those castanias? Yeah. Those are chestnuts? Oh. Now, when do you pick those? Now, most people don't oh. know. The chestnuts look like this when they grow on the on the trees. This week on October chestnut. This is what a chestnut really looks like. Yeah. What a chestnut. Most people don't know that chestnuts are in here and you sort of you take the skin up. off, or opens up, and there's your chestnut right you inside. Three, three inside. So you eat these? No, all of these? No, no, just chestnut inside. That opens up. 
No, but I mean you eat the chestnut. Oh, yeah. yeah. Why? They're edible. That's a big tree. Yeah, I've got water underneath. Right. And is that water. chestnut trees need a lot of water? And so you yeah. do drip irrigation. You you have hoses that go through yeah. here. Every road they got a hose. Now who weeds all this? Me. You. By yourself. Yeah. I do you find if you water more that there's less weeds? No. No? No. But the heat brings the weeds up. Let's go over here, because no. Ch Ch Chiro's not only on his acre and a half here, does he have corn, beans, Italian beans, okay, tomatoes, me... but he's also got some good peaches that I know you're going to like. All fenced in. Oh, that was a classic. We had such a good time that day, and we've got another uh, clip to show you about Jero Ormini uh, passed away on uh, July uh, 19th, and uh, he's about, I'd say, 89 years old, but it's hard sometimes to understand, you know, it, you keep thinking that, that everybody's, you know, 70 years old or 65 years old, and then you hear later on, you know, that they're, they're 90 or 89 or 95 or whatever it might be, but his gardens were amazing, just everything. I mean, every piece of his garden had something in it. And he didn't have five acres of land or anything. He had a small lot and a uh, you know, decent sized lot. But he had everything there. And we, we thought we were just going to go for a couple of minutes to see Chero. I think we stayed hours uh, that day. I think Jack Sully came with us that day. I'm not sure, but I think it was myself, Jack Sully, and, uh, and Kyle Pemerini. So we'll get to uh, more Chero. Uh, he passed away at, I think, 89 years old. He was uh, um, just. Shocking, because didn't realize it. He still looks, you know, the last time I saw him down at the mall, he looked exactly like he did right there in 2002. And uh, so we're going to show you a little bit more. Uh, and I'll tell you about kind of the, the after, like the inside scoop on, on some of the videos. And uh, yeah, Cheryl looked the same, but man, uh, I, 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 well, I won't talk about me, but geez, I look a little bit different. Anyway, um, Judy Sumner is the director at the Lummis Recreation Department. And uh, welcome to the show. Well, thank you for having me. And we've got lots to talk about because, boy, it's been a busy time. And um, most recently, um, one of the things that's happening is that we're updating our open space plan. <clears throat> and to set the stage on that, you can't, um, you cannot um, apply for state grants unless you have that open space plan done. Correct. Um, so it, it all started with forming a committee because we had to open update our plan. It's a seven-year plan. And um, if you look right here, Mayor, I've got a copy for you yep. um, right here. Uh, these are members that um, of our community that stepped forward. Mm -hmm. There was Jeff Ardinger, you know, in Ward 4B. He's involved with the New England Mountain Biking Association. Mm -hmm. And then Connie Breed, she's in Ward 5, and she works for the rec department as a part-time <coughs> bookkeeper. Um, and then there was Karen Chapman. She's with the uh, Montachusett Regional Planning Commission. She's a senior planner that helped us put this together. And then Angela Jabuski, she's the Lemonster Conservation Agent. And then there's Lisa Coma, our administrative assistant, to help with uh, things. Also Pauline Comier, um, Ward, Ward 2 City Councilor. And then Andy um, Furbush, <coughs> and he's with the um, Lemonster Youth Soccer Association. He's in Ward 3. And then there's Mickey Guzman. He's with Ward um, 3C, and he's um, representative from the Spanish Center, Spanish American Center. And then there's um, Kyla, Kayla Cress, and she did all the mapping for us nice. uh, through the Montachusett Regional Planning. And then Dick O'Brien, he helped to chair uh, with myself mm -hmm. um, the whole committee. And then John Roseberry helped with mapping as well. <laughs> And then Steve Simons, he's in Ward 1, and he's the past president of the um, uh, Little League up in North Lemonster. And then there's Wendy Weeks, um, she's in Ward 5, and she's the City of Lemonster grant writer. So all those people contributed to this. It was a lot of work. We met, you know, once yeah, a week. Yeah. Um, and we did most of our meetings on Zoom. Um, when we had the mapping, um, we put maps all out, and we went through all the different open spaces and the parks and areas of the city and any parcels that are available left in the city that would be potential for future you know, recreation or protect water protection or protection of open space and conservation areas. You know, so we looked at that, and um, so what we have, you know, the. The main part of this whole plan is to update the um, goals, 
your objectives, and then your action items for recreation. But overall, this plan is a resource for for the whole community, for all the city departments. If you look right on here on the con table of contents, this right here, first it you know has the planning process and how we reached out to the public. We did a public survey, we put that out and then all the survey information came back from all the questions and that's all listed. This is, um, this is the draft of the plan right now. It's a very lengthy uh, So if somebody wanted to come document. and take a look at it, and say, they so can. what's yeah. the city's plan for open space, parks, that sort of thing? They'd be able yes. to pick this up yes. and say, yeah. no, I have a pretty good understanding. Now, uh, objective number one or the goal number one may change from one to three, and three might become one, Correct. and that's all sort of, depending on what's going on, yeah. how the state's allocating money. If all of a sudden the state is allocating money for watershed property, then we're going to look at you know, more property that abuts mm -hmm. the watershed because that's where the money's available. But for, for the most part, um, we were talking today as we were opening up that new trail, <coughs> we were talking about how mm -hmm. you know, we have parks in every neighborhood and there's open space in every section of the city and, and uh, that all came through good planning, all good, you know, yes. listening to what residents had to say, mm -hmm. listening to those that had interest, some that weren't interested in trails or parks at the, at the time, but had an interest in them. They, right. weren't, they, they weren't using them and they'd have kids playing baseball in the parks but, or kids in recreation programs. Maybe they're retired, but they had an interest in the city and what happens here. So now that we know some of the open spaces that we have acquired in the past and looking to acquire in the future, it connects all the neighborhoods out to right. all the open space. Right. So if you wanted to enjoy nature and go for a walk or you, you know, can do that. mountain biking and things like that, or you know, just do nature study, you can connect from your neighborhoods. That's what we're working on um, as part of the plan. But the plan is a, is a resource because it tells you all about the regional content, tells you the history of your community, tells you all about the growth and development, the population. It talks about all the geology, the soils, the topography, the landscape characters, all the vegetation. It talks about fish and wildlife. It talks about all your scenic resources, and what are, environmental and you say, characteristics. You say scenic, what a great resource. Lemonster is surrounded by 12 hills, yes, which means yeah. you have panoramic views. Then yeah. you have beautiful valleys, right? Yes. Things in the valley. Yeah. Also, 12 uh, hills when you have rain and rainstorms, <coughs> drainage flows down. That's where we get our reservoirs. Mm -hmm. So we have all the wonderful, I always say we get the best part when Lancaster broke itself up. And split off with Bolton and you know Stowe and Lemon stuff. Like we got the best piece of it, you know. We, we did. got the river coming yeah. through. We got the hills and the valleys, and our downtown geographically right in the center of of the city. And mm -hmm. that's what that is. Just a compilation of yeah. of everything that, and it gets pretty. It, it gets pretty sophisticated. Um, it's not just hey we want, we see some land here. If we get that, we'd like to keep it for open space. You drill down quite a bit mm -hmm. in terms of of um, putting the plan together. As you talk about the geology, and right, right. <coughs> so all and, and it has um, a large number of maps, and all these maps have you know shows you all the reservoirs, right. shows you the water resources, it shows you where the parks are, um, and it shows you that you know the geology of it. You know all the maps. Um, you know, have there's so much of the city. If anything you want to know about the city, should be right in right into these maps, right here. Um, we have the <coughs> large maps that um, I have at my office. Anyone wanted to look at the larger maps, they can stop by the rec department. We'll also put a copy of the draft at the library if anyone wants to review them. Um, we can post. We'll post it online. Um, uh, I believe I posted it. Uh, we'll post it on Facebook and we'll put it on our city web page. So if anybody wants to just open up the, the web page, we'll be able to do that. Objective well. 22C-1, uh, add chess and gable, uh, game tables at benches at Doyle. I remember we put them downtown and people said, nobody will use those. Yeah. Yet, I go through town and people are playing chess on yeah. them and checkers and, and all that. Yeah. So I think that's a, something proven that we can say, nah, yes. you know, we're a little, people were a little bit skeptical, but in reality, we've had no abuse to them and nobody's uh, damaged them at all. There's been no vandalism. And why not take what, what's worked? and move it in another direction to an, a different part. So actually, when you talk about the game tables, and we're very fortunate that um, as part of a neighborhood ward <coughs> grant, um, Pete Angelini, yes. had, I spoke with him, and we had a game table, a nice, beautiful granite um, nice. It's um, checkers really nice. and chess you can play, and it's got benches <coughs> for you to sit at so you can play, you know, bring your children there, bring your family there, and have a game of checkers or chess. Thank and you. Uh, Bob, 
Bob Charmette also donated another um, table, so that will be coming in very shortly. We'll be picking that up. Um, so that's, um, we're looking forward to that. So that's, a, and, and actually, that's kind of a lead in to the grant also. One of the goals and objectives, which there's um, five, I believe that there's five main ones on this mm -hmm. right here. Um, all those goals, oh no, there's more than five. Yep. How many are there? Eight. Oh, last number. <laughs> I see eight so far. <laughs> 10. 10, okay. Oh yeah, that's right, there were 10. We narrowed it down to 10. Um, there were multiple, we have five different goals and objectives, <coughs> but those are the action items. Mm -hmm. So um, one of the action items is to make improvements to the play area at Barrett Park. We've right. already done phase one, so we're looking to do phase two now. Um, in that area, that playground that we have at Barrett Park actually is 22 years old. Wow. And that came from Julie Country Day mm -hmm. School. And when yeah, they closed, 15, they gave us all the 15 years ago, that was moved to Barrett Park. So it's, and it's still a great playground. Yeah, However, yeah. You know, it's showing signs sure. of wear. Yeah, because they had uh, it for 20 years, probably. Yes, and there's some sections on it, it that, you know, there's safety concerns that I haven't shut it down Are yet. Are you trying to give her water, Bradley? <laughs> Just hand her the water. I don't need to interrupt. That's thank okay. You. Okay. Thank you. Oh, oh thank you. Look at you, Bradley, huh? Come and take, take it in from all ends. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so anyways, as part of Barrett Park, we want to put in a new playground there. So this is what we have I don't want to, as a proposal. So um, the O'Brien and Sons have built most of our playgrounds in the city. So they came up with a totally new design. This is something that's all state of the art. Everyone's going with, you know, all these climbing ropes and um, it's all open, open area so you can see the children. Um, so this area over here is for the two to five year olds. Um, the existing playground right now doesn't have playground equipment for the two to five year olds. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to have that. Um, and then this area is for the six to 12 year olds, all of this climbing high, you know, sections and this high slide, the spinners over here. There's a little swing over here. Um, there's another area that the kids can bounce on and it's a climbing for the younger ones and balancing. So it has a, and these all are on springs and here's a slide for them and these all move. Um, so the only thing is when we had our public hearing when I looked at this new design <coughs> and I don't know if it's quite handicapped accessible and that was one of our goals in our plan is to make all of our parks and playgrounds handicapped accessible. <coughs> Connie Breed from our office put together this huge plan. <laughs> she went through and inventoried all of our plans and updated them so we have you know we looked through that. So we want to make this all handicapped accessible. And at Barrett Park, the, um, the pavilion by the playground is mm -hmm. not handicapped accessible. Uh, you can't get to there with a wheelchair. So we want to, Andrew <coughs> Leonard um, has designed several of our parks and playgrounds in the city. So he did a design for us showing <coughs> that there would be a trail, a trail coming off the existing handicapped trail and bringing it right to the pavilion. And then people are asking for barbecue grills and things like that. We're gonna put a grill down there. We're gonna add more picnic tables that it's, are handicapped accessible because those aren't. It's turned into know. quite the place down there. It's a busy it place. Been. Everyone's it's gone asking from, for it. <laughs> you know, a couple people walking around there during the daytime and then had tennis courts and a few people playing to just this busy place where a lot of people have discovered, uh, you know, it's quiet and yeah. there's plenty yeah. to do down there. You can let the kids run and yeah. uh, so that's good stuff. There's a lot of space. So also too, you know, the community said, well, we want more things for recreation mm. when we have our summer camp there. Right. And we said, well, let's put in like sand volleyball court. Mm. So we thought, oh, volleyball would be great. Let's do some horseshoes there. Let's put some game tables. So that's the whole plan. And we have to grade it because we have a little bit of issue with runoff, mm -hmm. you know, m getting that grassy area wet. So that's all in a plan. And uh, people in our survey said they wanted more fishing areas. Yep. So we said, well, we have a lot of fishing areas at Barrett, but if you have a mm -hmm. little function right there, we'll do a little path so the kids can go down, you know, to fish right there. But there's other pier fishing places, the peninsula you can fish at, so. Coming along, uh, we got a grant to uh, do the engineering for the uh, dam, right? I mean, so yes, that's, that's in yeah. place. Yeah. And uh, so it's we got the open space plan done. Um, the water parks are busy places, right? It's been hot, thank goodness we got that done. And then we've got the skateboard park. And yes. uh, looks we like just finished. We just, <laughs> we just got through the, the, we just the got plan. Through the design. Oh, this, this is 
Back I tell forth. you, it'd be one of the best around. It will be. Yeah. yeah. We have a we have a whole um, pump track in there. So Stephen Snay has he's the chairman of the whole committee mm -hmm. for designing this and developing it. So he's been great, you know, forming the committee and. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Jeff Ardinger's on the committee as well, and um, Haley Brady, and uh, Ryan Martin, and Taylor. And this was Taylor. probably the biggest yeah. group that we've worked with on any project. Yes. That, that they got skin in the game, and no pun intended, because yeah. you skin your leg when you fall. <laughs> but they got skin in the game, but they've really put up. They didn't just show up to be critical or, or to say, well, you should do this, you should do that. They actually showed up and helped. Yeah. And w raised money and everything. And that's what we you did. want in the project. You want, yeah, we did. You want that buy-in, that, that uh, you know, that I got skin in the game. And yeah. I'm, I'm interested in this, and I'll help you to do it, rather than just, you know, call me when the project's done. And one thing, uh, Tony Hawk Foundation supported our project yeah. and gave us 10000 yeah. towards That's it. That's amazing. So their foundation was great. It's called yeah. the Skate Park Project right. now. But so that was really exciting to How see fun. that they were, you know, but so there's a lot <coughs> of nice features in there. There's a volcano in there. I don't know all the skateboarding yeah, yeah. terminology. Yeah. But, I can see it. But no, look at the other one. You'll see the whole pump track. It's going to be saw, yeah. one of the biggest pump tracks in the area. See all of that? <laughs> so what she means is this yeah, whole, that you whole know, pump the, track. Yeah. go up and down and then you... Yeah, and then bam. there'll be a handicapped accessible sidewalk that will come off from the street of the parking area. And then you can also use that walkway to, if you wanted to view basketball as well. And there's going to be a, a little uh, area, a platform to watch people at. So a sitting area also. Summer programs. So, so we got the water parks open, the pool is open. Um, summer programs well attended this year? They are. We're full. Yeah. We so are you're full, full with our programs. Yeah. I mean, we had limited numbers this year yeah, due to of COVID. Course. And yeah. there's also. Well, we didn't know when we were planning yes. them what the restrictions right. were going to be, so you had to build right. them accordingly, right? And our yeah. spaces are limited also as well. Yeah. And um, this year we had a difficult time trying to find staff. I know. It's very like difficult. Like everywhere else. To have staff. Before, yeah. we would have people knocking the doors down to get a job yeah. working for the rec department, and this year it's just yeah. a little bit difficult. And now with difficult. COVID, if somebody doesn't feel good, you know, they, stay home. then they have to stay home. So, you know, we have to have extra staff on for this year also so we you know scrambling you know and, and also too you know plus we had the field hockey program so that's that's um, communities all come here all schools from all over the central mass area come and play twice a week Tuesdays and Thursdays at Doyle Field that's a very competitive program in the <laughs> it summer. sure is yes yeah, well we, you know. we thank the board of directors um, for the rec department we thank the uh, city council for being so supportive uh, all the volunteers and the employees that work there. You know, the winter operation is very small, and then this thing, you know, blossoms to 100 people or so in the summer. And it's a big operation, and then yet we still have the responsibility of the water parks and the pool and the maintenance and the, uh, you know, the, the, the other parks, like the little water park on 3rd mm. Street and, and, you know, the park that, that um, it looks beautiful down there at 3rd, at uh, Laurel Street. and Mechanic Street. Boy, he's doing a great job down there. Yeah. And... Uh, it, it's it just so worth having somebody down there like him and, uh, and all our partners who help. And so these programs are pretty big. And um, this year we had to cut back a little bit on the enrollment part, but we, we still offered the programs. And, but it was hard getting help this summer. So, you know, I mean, we'll certainly work off of that. And our mountain biking um, <coughs> Yeah, program, I heard that went well. That went over 20. You're going to do another yeah, one? It was a huge, yeah. We're gonna, well, she was going to do two more. So people are wanting that. So that's good. And we're going to do, you know, I just met with um, Jeff O'Neill and Lauren Osowski. We're going to do a basketball. We, oh, good. We're going to do outdoors, though, because yeah. indoors You're is, better off uh, outdoors if you we're can. We're going to do it at Fournier Park. So we're going to so do just So there's no reason this year. I mean, you've got Boys and Girls Club operating mm -hmm. programs, us, the school Department, I'm in the Spanish American Center. There's something. There's, there's golf. Do you have? Do you run a golf camp? We used to, but Manusnock does it now. Manusnock does a really good they job it of now. it. So it's better yeah. to hand those. It's better to hand those kinds of things off and let them do it. We work with them, and then they. Yeah, were able Watching to Hills do it does some camps. Yeah. Let them yeah. do what they're good at, rather than trying to offer every single thing. But yeah. anyway, thank you, Judy. There's a lot going on here. You've got the open space plan done uh, already. Uh, skateboard. Grant uh, skateboard park uh, happening soon. The, um, uh, the first uh, grant has been put in for upgrades of, of equipment at Barrett Park. Uh, Barrett Park is, is somewhat um, handicap accessible, right? Yes, yes. And we've got a platoon boat that can go out there if somebody would like to. And so all kinds of things that are happening. It's a big, big, big operation during the summer. 
It is. And it um, is. so, if, how about learn to swim? Do you have any openings in those programs? Are those full? This, they too? still have a few openings, <laughs> you know, towards the end of the summer. But that's been a really popular program as well because yeah. you know swimming, learning how to swim is really important, and that Very was one important. of the main reasons we entered into a an agreement with the state. They were going to close down the pool in Lemonster because it needed you know a lot of yep. uh, repairs and it was costly mm -hmm. for them. So. You know, Mayor, we thank you. You know, you stepped forward and said, no, the state's not going to close this down. We'll partner with the city, right. I mean, with the state. Yeah. No, so we partnered with them, yep. and I felt it was really I can't even imagine not lesson. having that pool. No. Because no, there's no other wonderful. beaches in Lemons that you can yes, actually no. swim at that are no. public. So that meant, you know, one time while we were doing some work to the pool, we were, we were renting out... Uh, uh, down at Spec Pond, we rented space there, busing we kids down. We did, yeah. It's important. There's not a whole lot of places yep. that are public yep. that, you know, kids can go and visit and, and have a good time. We right? rented Whalen Park. Yeah, we did that too. A couple of years yeah. and, yeah. and held lessons there, um, you know, and we used to do it at Barrett's years ago, but yep. because of the, you know, the sedimentation in there and the water. That's everywhere you know? now. You notice yeah. the, the DEP <laughs> and the dynamic. regulators are just making it more and more difficult. You know, you got to have the proper visibility, the quality yep. of the water. Yeah. And um, unfortunately, so, at that so, Barrett, yeah. it, it, you don't get the intake to the water that yeah. you used to get before, right. whether the springs that are clogged up, whatever. And so, um, but I'll tell you, the water parks get so much they use. Do. They, do. they are used all of the time, like the second you open. Mm -hmm. and, and so all going well. So it's another successful summer. And thank you and your staff. And as I said, the board of directors, the city council, and all our volunteers. We were just at an event today up on Hill Street. And, um, you know, so many volunteers have come forward to say, hey, Rail Trail. I don't know if we have pictures here tonight of it, but, oh. you know, Rail Trail. We need people to help maintain. We couldn't possibly have Wayne Tate back there. He's everywhere, but we couldn't possibly have him doing everything, right? I mean, there's only a limited amount of people, but um, volunteers have done just a magnificent job helping us out, and it really does make a difference. So if anybody's okay. interested, there are plenty of places to, 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 uh, to get involved if you'd like. And you should just call our office at 534-7500, extension zero. Or you can call, is it 978-534-7529? Yes. And that's the recreation department number. <laughs> Where is Did that? Did I forget to turn my cell phone on? I don't know. Oh, is no, that? that's me. Does and that? It's behind the couch. Oh. <laughs> Sorry Pay about no that. Pay no attention to that phone <laughs> behind. Yeah, behind the couch. The couch. <laughs> behind the curtain. <laughs> well, thank you for coming on again. Thank you. Keep up the good work up Thank there you. at the rec department. and uh, I have one more thing to say. What? Of course. What happened? Well, when you talked about volunteers, next Tuesday, Target employees are coming up to volunteer. Oh, I didn't know to that. help clean up their oh, help that's, stuff. They're going to come up to, to Bear, Bear Park. Park. Yeah. Wonderful. So we got some more weeding to do. So I just interrupt you there. No, <laughs> that's okay. Yeah, you can give them a little recognition. Yeah. You yeah. know, there are businesses and church groups and different yeah. organizations. Uh, the Community Foundation uh, made a donation yeah. today, a significant donation for the trails. And uh, every day I talk to a company that's like, hey, we don't really care about the exposure. We're not doing this yeah. because we want to be acknowledged for anything. We really see what you're doing in the community, yeah. and we see what a difference it makes. We want to be part of that. Yeah. So, you know, there's, you know, we'd like to be involved. Is there something we can get involved? Sometimes people call. They already know how they want to be involved. Oftentimes they mm -hmm. just call and say, how can you get us involved? Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, good stuff. Okay. Judy, oh, thank tennis, you. Tennis. Ten oh my word. Oh my god. Tennis <laughs> and pickleball. <laughs> 45. Oh, how did you forget this? Forty-five children signed up for tennis. 45? I went there last night. Yeah. Forty-five. Forty-five. That's one. I went there last night. That's a. That's a very mobile. You got to move when you're playing tennis. Well, that's good. Grade one and two. Oh, oh cool. really? <laughs> Who's the teacher for that? Fifteen and that. That is the uh, best. Yeah, actually, we have. Um, um, Daryl, Darren, and um, Kristen Haley from oh. from Clinton. Yeah. There, um, Kristen is rated um, the, one of the top fifty um, in tennis competition. Really? In, for youth. Yeah. When, the, when do they when do they do that? Um, they do it on Wednesday nights. And then um, can you let, can and you Gina Akaboni, she's um, a tennis player yeah. for the high school. She's helping out with that. So can we you have let two, Kelly know next time they have? I'd love yeah. to see those little kids playing. Yeah. That then, must be the best. Well, one and two, three and four, yeah, and five whatever. and six. So yeah. that's 15 in each age, mm -hmm. each hour wow. we have. That's well, 45. Nice. That's and really I had a waiting nice. list. Really? Yeah. You know, I thought for a while like tennis was phasing out and, no. and golf, but... I, it's like another generation is picking up these sports. That's wonderful. Yeah. All right, Judy, okay. thank you. Okay, you're welcome. And well, uh, sit you. tight. They'll come and demic you. We're going to take another short break, and maybe we'll see another clip of uh, Chero Ermini and uh, his wonderful garden and his, uh, his, well, his wife came to the rescue. So let's watch. Bring it down Florida. 
Oh, you're going to plant tomatoes down there? Yeah. Oh, so you start getting tomatoes start, right away down yeah, there? Yeah, the Christmas time I got tomatoes. That's just the, the plants. Do they taste They taste as good here, there no. as here? No. no. How come no. He, How come they taste so much better know. here? I've know. eaten tomatoes in Florida, and for some reason, yeah. they just don't taste the same. That's it, the plants. I just plant the thick of the Florida with me. I see a red cherry tomato over here, and it's yelling my name. Right here. That's perfect. Right there. I always give them a little cleaning. This eggplant. Look at that. I could sit here forever. You only know how many cherry tomatoes I pick out of there? Thousands. These are good, Cheryl. I'll be looking for these around mid February. A good cherry tomato. Forget about it. You can't get them. Forget about it. And get something that looks like one. Okay, we're going to go sit down. Yeah. You go find your biggest tomato, and we're going to, uh, I need a little knife, Cheryl. Yeah. Right over here. Beautiful. Look at those tomatoes. Okay. Those, are, those are big. Those are big. Look at the size of these. Holy. All right, this one looks, yeah, well, we got pretty big ones here. Now, let's say this one here. Now, we, we um, all summer have been looking for the great tomatoes in town. And uh, we got a knife around, Cheryl? Uh, no, I don't know. But to me, a, a good tomato is, is pretty much everything. Don't, uh, that we don't have for you today is that, and, and again, that's uh, Cheryl Amini. And Cheryl, um, it was funny because I, he, was, he was already growing his seeds. He had put, already planted his seeds for uh, tomatoes that he was gonna grow in Florida. And as I said, the, the most amazing garden. And what's interesting is that nothing anywhere tastes like it does around here. So I've eaten tomatoes from different parts of the country. They don't have that taste, but everything he grew there was just incredible. So then uh, the missus decides to uh, put together a Italian bean and with olive oil and a little bit of garlic, and it was just out of this world. And then came Chero's wine, which I just so happened. Chero, uh, I like, like when I do drink wine, and I don't drink a lot, but I like it on the cool side, and I like it on the sweet side. Just sweet, a little bit tart. And um, so Chero starts breaking up the bottles of wine. And Carl and I, and I believe Jack, I don't know where the video is of, of that, but um, we, we indulged and we had a lot of laughs and we had fun with Cheryl and we talked about gardening and just about the Italians and Italy and, and um, everything you can ever imagine. And we had, it was, so we, were, we had planned to be there for like 20 minutes because we had visited each place for like 20 minutes and I don't even know what time we left. I'm not even sure, but I can tell you we, uh, and then Cheryl had made some white wine. So at the end of all this, after we ate and after we had drank, uh, at, at tasted tasted some wine. Uh, Cheryl said, oh, you gotta try my white wine. And uh, so he breaks out the white wine. And um, all I can say is we had a blast and uh, Cheryl passed away July 13th. And I believe around 89 years old and uh, a friend to many and uh, just an entertaining guy, a real classic that you, you wanna know and you wanna spend time and you wanna have as much in the way of conversation with you as you can. And, uh, and, and you want to eat as much as you can out of his garden as fast as you can for as long as you can because, well, you know, he still can things, but uh, peaches and just everything. And then, and then he, he, did, he even had a little stand set up inside of his garage if people wanted to come over, but after time he ended up just giving it away. So anyway, a, a wonderful life it was for uh, Chero, and thank you for all uh, that you have done for us and uh, those ex special experiences that we had uh, with you and sharing a wine. One day, Bob, Bob Antonioni used to have his uh, pig, but by the way, it's Bob, An Bob Antonioni's birthday. So, Cheryl uh, was, it, I don't even know where he appeared from, but we were at the pig roast. And I just remember, I'm talking to some people, and a, a, one of those red cups comes out. It's got a little bit of wine in it. Cheryl backs in his car, he's got the stuff in his trunk, and he it's at the Eagles. And he starts pouring a little, I want you to taste this. And, and next, I uh, taste it. But what I didn't realize is me, I'm kind of on the, you know, the fast pace, moving quick, talking quick. 
and and he keeps like filling up little at a time his my cup. Well, I just say I didn't drive after, had to get a ride, but my ride was to Cheros. Well, we had some more wine, some more beans, some more things out of the garden, and I can just tell you a lot of laughs. So. Rest in peace, my friend, in what an experience and a full life he had, and uh, to think of all the other people who, um, you know, who had those special times that were created by Chero, and uh, a, a good life and a beautiful, wonderful wife and family that he had, and so many friends, and uh, you know, that's, that, you know, when it's all said and done, and you're heading to the gates, you want to look back and say, that's exactly how a, you know, if I could have lived my life out, that's exactly how I would want to have done it, right? So rest in peace, my friend, and uh, take some of those seeds with you uh, because nobody grows tomatoes like you. And, you know, we sliced them and diced them, and I bit into one like an apple and let all that tomato juice just drip all over my shirt, and that's pot you're not seeing. We'll dig that up someday, but Kyle ended up having to come back the next day. I called him, and I said, Kyle, I don't know if you can show <laughs> Like, I'm not sure you can show some of this stuff. And he says, what do you mean? I said, I, I don't know. I said, you better watch the tape again. And so the, him and Jack watched the tape again. He said, oh, yeah, we got we to gotta cut some of this out. But anyway. All right. Um, do we have the video from today? I don't know. What, let's see what we have, because I'm not sure exactly what we have. Do we have it from the new um, fitness center? We do. Yeah, we have a clip from that, too. Let, let's show that. Yes. Yes. Walk it back. Walk it back. Walk it back. Okay. Look, Kyle, yo, you, you cut it. You did all the work. You cut it. Right. Right. Are you counting down, folks? 100, 20, <laughs> 10, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Whoa! Yeah. 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 I want to thank uh, Jim Xeris and his wife. They provided a lot of first-time businesses an opportunity to be able to open their business, to expand. And this place is about full right now. That's great. And it's, got a, it's just like athletic and health uh, central, I think, everything in the building. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, I have a friend. That's right. <laughs> anyway, thanks for providing those. I mean, this is a great incubator. A place for people to start a business and grow their business and, you know, your dream, right? One yes, of your sir. dreams? Yes. Besides your family, but I mean, a dream to start a business in town and grow it. And So anyway, we have a little citation, and it's get right. And let's get it right, because it's R-I-G-H-T-T-T. -T -T. And the T stands for... Extra right. <laughs> yeah, extra right fitness. So anyway, congratulations to you, your family, your staff, volunteers, so much, and friends and family, because... Uh, this is a big deal when you get a chance to, you know, to do something like this. So, mm -hmm. right? You remember that. Yes. Uh, stay in shape. <laughs> All right. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, here's a guy who uh, played uh, football at Mr. High. Went off to UMass, was, I think, one of the captains there. Just a good family, good guy. Uh, his brothers were there, his family, his dad, grandchildren. And uh, really, this, this is what it's all about. This is, this is what the community is all about. And so many um, people in the community that got a chance to you know, live out their dream and start a business. And uh, what a beautiful place. And they even had an air conditioning. Huh? How about that? All right, let me get to a few things here. I uh, want to let you know. Uh, did, let me just look through here because it's a, it, let me go through the slides real quick and see what we've got. All right, so yesterday, 32,000 people were tested in Massachusetts, 208 tested positive. There were 18 in Worcester County, and Lemonster was at 9. So we've gone from 5 to 9. You're going to get a little bit of an uptick simply because, well, everything is open and no restrictions anymore, very few, other than the state house is still closed, and I'm not sure about that, but we'll take, t take that up on a different day. Uh, 102 people are in hospitals, 37 in intensive care. Average age of that is hospitalized, 65 years old. Look at our demographics here. We're at 68% uh, uh, vaccinated, or at least with one, and one shot, but some are just one shot, so it's hard to uh, evaluate. But if you look at uh, 75 plus, 87%, 65 to 74%, uh, uh, 65 to 74 years of age, at uh, 93%. 50 to 60. So you can see there, uh, Lemonster exceeds many of the other communities around the state and country. Police station, where is it at? Planning board approved the police station plans last week. Conservation commission approved plans last night. The bids will happen this summer. 
uh, well, hope for groundbreaking, hopefully uh, in, in uh, just after Labor Day. National Night Out is an event that used to be held at uh, Riverside Apartments there. And uh, this, this year, they decided not to do it, so we're moving it to downtown. So it's going to be like a public safety day, touch a truck. Wayne will be out there at one of those big dump trucks and displays, and the fire department, police department, emergency management will be there, sheriff's department, state police. But we're doing something a little bit unique to start ours off this year. Um, we're going to celebrate the diversity here in the community. And on August 3rd, at 5 o'clock sharp, we will be down at Walgreens near Lemus to Credit Union, and we will kick off our our march, our parade. You're welcome to bring balloons and signs and put a float together if you want. But it's really celebrating diversity in a way that you don't often see um, in other communities. And today, when we were doing the grand opening, it was sort of the last thing that was said is, you know, this is a, a, a place to come and work out, to spiritually get your mind together, to, to get your body ready and keep yourself, you know, your mind clean and, and let everything that's going on on the outside stay on the outside. And this is the way we're going to do it on the inside. And, and um, diversity in the city has been celebrated, not just accepted, but welcomed. And uh, so we're going to celebrate that. And we invite everybody. Um, and again, this is a, a, a community where your religious beliefs, your ethnic descent, whatever it is, no one really cares. They just embrace it and enjoy it. You know, I talked about uh, Chero, but I can't tell you how many, uh, you know, kitchens and living rooms I've been in and from every, and how many churches and temples I've, I've visited over time and how many people I broke bread with and got a chance to eat their desserts and their specially made soups and hug their grandmothers and everything else, right? So diverse in this community. And that's always something that, uh, you know, that's been celebrated. And we're going to, you know, put a cherry on top by our, our event here. And that's at uh, August 3rd. Everyone's welcome. And uh, 5 to 8 o'clock. Farmer's Market is the first Saturday in every month. And tonight, yes, people have been asking, is there going to be a concert tonight? And the answer is absolutely. Mark Marquis and friends will be over at Carter Park, I believe, starting at 7 o'clock tonight. Is that uh, what it is? Sounds like 7 o'clock. Gives you the thumbs up. Outdoor dining, thanks in part to a Shared Streets grant. And uh, Wendy went out and took some of these pictures today. And, you know, when you see the Eagle downtown, and you're going to see other things. You're going to see us spend money on other things. When this happens, you know, we're getting grants. And these grants are to be spent specifically to help small businesses, to help the downtown, to bring people into town. That eagle that's downtown is the most photographed in, in the last week and a half since July 3rd, has been the most photographed thing, including the, you know, the Red Sox, the Woo Sox uh, uh, games out there in Worcester, is the most photographed um, uh, 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 of anything. In the, and, and it gets shared all over the place. So, you know, this is what specifically it's for is to, to bring people into town, to create the tourism that was here once before, to get people to come in uh, to town, to get people to be outside, whatever it might be. So I think we've gotten to most of the slides. What else didn't we have here that I wanted to speak to? So on, look at that. Stay cool in the new park downtown. We have a little water amenity. Yes, it's on for a few hours, but we really can't run it full time because we're on this sort of um, the water ban because we're working on the treatment plant. Not because we don't have sufficient amount of water. It's only because 80% of the water comes from no town, and we're working on that system as we speak to do upgrades, and we have to draw down on the system, and we do want to make sure that we have enough on the reservoirs in the event that we do run into a drought situation. So we run this for an hour or two and then shut it off, but little kids come through and run and have a ball. Stearns Ave, doing water work down there, replacing water lines. Uh, boy, look at Sally planted those just a month and a half ago. And look at look at those things. Everything's coming into full broom. She did the Alzheimer's Park last week. Downtown Flowers, she's planting more this weekend on the bankings of City Hall. Jim LeBlanc, if you have not come to City Hall to look at this guy's work, it is, it is jaw-dropping. Um, he takes and, and does these, and they are to scale. And you think you were looking at the actual house. And stop down. Jim LeBlanc's work on display at City Hall as we speak. Can you? It is amazing to see the level of detail. Uh, he's just switched out the, um, the, the, the exhibit, but uh, this is the second of his exhibits. Stop down, 
please take a look at it. It's nothing like seeing it in person. Hey, welcome to Edible Arrangements over there on Central Street. What a wonderful uh, grand opening they had. We were there to help cut the ribbon. Wonderful people making a big investment. I mean a big, it was an old kind of factory set in building, commercial, and they invested in a big way down there at uh, Edible Arrangements. And Route 13 work continues. They continue at night. They're doing some work on the walls during the daytime. They set the new paces for new lights. And people say, well, how are you going to, you know, how's this going to be successful without widening the bridge? It's about moving vehicles and using technology in, in a way of a computer system to move people through in groups and move them through safely, proper markings, properly with groups. So in reality, we're going to move a lot more people through there than we ever have and more safely. Five minutes left here at Inside Lemonster. Dean Mazzarella is my name. And new heating and cooling installed at Central Street Fire Station, thanks to the Green Communities Fund and grant. And uh, again, a big partnership between city departments, uh, the mayor's office, Wendy Weeks, and different state agencies. New, new ambulance uh, came in. It was uh, paid for in cash by using free cash, no borrowing. I believe that's uh, ambulance number three. Equipped with a new electric stretcher, so, you know, we have less injuries. You heard Art say that his wife was dropped. They were trying to, not the fire department, but at the hospital, trying to help her into the car. It happens. These things happen, but it's equipped with a new electric stretcher. Cool stuff. And we welcome again Get Right Fitness with TTT at the end there. What a nice experience it was to be there today. And it's even more beautiful inside and uh, uh, a great success story by one of Lummis's own. And there it is, base to ground control, the Lee Eagle has landed. So originally we're going to put him out there on July 4th, but the weather was not so great, so we put him out on the 3rd. So we put him out, figure we put him out for a few days. Well, let me tell you, that is just people keep coming in from all over the place. I said, please, I'm bringing my grandkids down. I'm stopping down on Thursday. Please don't take the Eagle down. So we'll keep them up a little longer. And again, um, this, is, this is using the um, uh, tourism money. Uh, this is from businesses in the city, and that's what pays for it. And you'll see more of us, you know, bringing in business, uh, th things that are going to help attract. You know, businesses suffered. And yeah, they're doing okay now. They're doing better. But let me tell you, it, it's, it's been tough. And now, couple that with the fact that there's increased costs uh, in doing business, especially in the food industry. I mean, just the prices have gone through the roof. I'm sure you know and have experienced that as well. Narada Gumbo, Friday and Saturday night over at uh, Hampton Beach. I think around 7 o'clock or so. Mark Marquis and friends tonight at 7 o'clock at, uh, at, at Carter Park. And much more going on. Thank you, Judy Sumner, for coming on tonight. Thank you to uh, Cheryl's family. I hope you were watching tonight and get a chance to see this, but a real tribute to one of Lemonster's legends. We're out of time here at Inside Lemonster. I want to thank the whole crew. Wayne's here on the switches, and Keith's here, and Ron was here, and Bradley was here, and uh, filling in for Carl and doing a great job. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Good night. God bless you. Remember, the world is run by those who show up. You need to show up. Good night. Inside Lemonster is brought to you in part through the generous support of N.P. Crowley Company Incorporated and by Landmark Self Storage in Lemonster. www.landmarkselfstorage.com